and uh, got to spend a little bit more time on this bike. It's been, I don't know, probably about four or five days since we played with this last. And the last thing we were kind of working on was uh, setting up a clutch lever for that back drive belt to make it drive and not drive, you know, with this setup. Now, I'm happy with that wrench that I have there and that pivot and, and that guy. But that top lever, it, it was something I grabbed and at the time I kind of liked the shape of it. It, I don't know if I quite like that or not though, so I may or may not change that up. But anyway, I still have to get from there, across to there, and down to there. So I figure I will work on that part of it and we'll go see um, what we can do about setting up a, you know, some kind of knuckle back in here to transfer the energy and to kind of turn it on and off. And I have a horde of, in purgatory, the trailer's called purgatory, it's all the stuff that hasn't gone to the dump yet, but, uh, you know, it's, again, halfway in, it's a bunch of old snowblowers. They, the old stuff usually has a bunch of linkages, the new ones more have cables. But a lot of the older ones have That guy might not be too bad right there. A little knuckle. And this one's nice and close. I kind of like the ratchet setup on this one. It's got a button on top. You kind of push in and select the position. Looks a little on the fat side though, but uh, maybe we'll hack that out of there. And then maybe we can kind of go with the, some of these rods. So I'm gonna go grab some tools. I'm gonna pull the tin off of here, see what it has for a knuckle down below. Maybe just kind of grab a bunch of this stuff off of here and uh, see how we like that and uh, see if any of that will suit our purpose. That kind of looks pretty good. It's got an old kind of look to it, don't it? Be nice if I change that out to like a brass doorknob. Hmm. All right, let me get some tools. All right, so a couple of bolts and uh, a wire cutter later. And uh, that's uh, all the mechanisms out of that snowblower. It's got kind of a funky pivot with a bracket. So I'm gonna play with that setup too, but I can uh, use maybe bits and pieces of it. The rods I can cut and sh lengthen and shorten the rods and twist them and heat them and bend them. But they got kind of some cool features to them. This one, it's got a spring up in the rod and then a set. So what it's got, it's got like a little bit of a preload to it. So I can, if I use this setup, you could use it as a cushion, you know, for on the belt that you kind of maintain tension uh, with a, you know, any any um, irregularities in the belt of it getting tight and loose, tight and loose, you could absorb by having that in there. You know, the, the uh, tension pulley can uh, bounce around a little bit, so. Uh, I think it's kind of fat up here, but I don't know yet until I uh, cut it free. It's got two tabs. You know, a tab there, a tab there. And then uh, again in the front in two spots. So I'm thinking of just cutting them free with a wire wheel from the other side and we can expose like a, the ratchet and the guts. That's what it's got for, for a shifter. I should, I should leave the plate and everything right on it. <laughs> Everybody else think it has, has a reverse. So, I don't know. Uh, let me, uh, I don't know what I'm going to go do. I'm going to take that knuckle off of there and maybe put it up to the back of the bike and look at it and try to get an uh, idea of maybe if any of that will work or if not, uh, start cutting. All right, so I ended up grabbing that uh, that knuckle set up on there and just kind of shoving it up in the uh, proximity and flipping it around and you know, put in different spots and see where the best place to kind of go and pivot. And what I come up with is, um, this is basically the line I have to try to try to come up in this direction and then shoot it back. So I'm thinking, it's gonna fight me now. I like to get the pivot. Yeah, I'm gonna get the pivot right about there, I'm thinking. So that kind of would make that one and that one line up pretty good with a, a con rod made up. You know, cut it in the middle there somewhere. And then come up maybe, probably maybe even with the tube and uh, come across to the front. 
and uh, kind of match the curve. I'm thinking of trying to match the curve at the bottom of the tank with a rod of some sort. But we'll see. I'm still, right now I'm still working on this. So I'm thinking the pivot, again, right about there somewhere it needs to be. Kind of split the difference. So I don't know if I want to try to use any of this bracket to attach to this or, you know. Hmm. I could probably cut that down a little short. Cut this wall off. Bring this wall over to this one. Yes, no meat. Where are they going to go? I don't think I use both sides. I think I got to use. That's in. Hmm. See what I mean? So, uh, I'm going to go play with this for a little bit and try to come up with some kind of uh, something, something for, for a solution. And uh, keep moving forward. Yeah. All right, what would you do? <laughs> I right, see you in a minute. Yeah, so I figured I know where my pivot point needs to be, so I need to put something in there for that to rock on. So I took the bottom template back out of the garbage that I made for that one. I figured, well, I'll just use that over again. The shape will look familiar on the bike. And what I'll do is I'll just maybe shave those two edges in. I'll fudge with it a little bit. Something like that. You get the idea. So uh, then we'll cut a piece of steel out, punch a hole in it, and go from there. And after a little bit of wheeling, got another one. Somewhere there's a dot on it. So I'm thinking right about there. That way it kind of gussets the frame, tightens that up, leaves me room to get in there to weld, and then just kind of matches that somewhat, that one on the bottom. I figure it's the same pattern being used the other direction, but uh, you know seeing that different. So I think I'm going to uh, cut down this bracket probably to width first or probably hack off you know, what I know I don't need up top and then went, uh, knock this sucker down to a, probably about a half inch wide and my idea is to cut that down. We'll make that the pivot and the bolt and everything that goes through just goes through on that plate. So let's see how that makes out. And I just put one tack in the back side of it. Everything's kind of cut down to where I can at least pivot it in, in the window there. So, you know, I figured probably right about here, you know, level with this rod. We'll make the one that goes forward. And almost probably pretty close to the, to the outside point here. Over the distance. Maybe try to parallel that line back there, you know. From wherever I grab it on the wrench here. Right there. So now I gotta go look into see what I got for rod. I do have those two that came off of it. Off the blower. This is this works the wrong direction. Um, this that spring preload would have to be pushing, not pulling. So uh, that doesn't work for that guy. But uh, I may just uh, cut like this guy with its adjuster right out of there. And uh, we'll just shorten this whole thing right up to what we need. So maybe that might be a good deal. I'll get the uh, the top cotter key out of there. And we'll pull this rod out and see how she looks. Well, that wasn't too bad. A little bit of cutting, button and slice in there. I just shove some crappy cotter keys in it to kind of hold it all together. But essentially, I'm getting the whole thing. There's my hand. There's my hand. So, and again, I. It should go, you know, I got that much adjustment. I got the adjustment in the furthest away or at least doing the least amount of work right now, you know. And I got probably a good inch and a half of um, uh, conrod adjustment I can make. I kind of, it's almost split the difference, probably in a little further than it is out on that. And uh, I just took the, the pin that was off that snowblower and welded that pin to Right now it's tacked to this rod and you know, I cut that rod off and it's still solid on top. You can't see the top of the threads. Um, worst case, if I need to make it maybe more adjustable, I could probably knock off about another quarter inch of that. Then the rod can come right out of it. But I don't think so. I think we're pretty good. On this side. Not like it, it somewhat parallels the um, the tube next to it. Not that it needs to, but 
and all the energy seems to be you know, transferred to the correct location. Looks like it should do pretty good as far as being able to crank down on the belt, you know. So now leave all that alone and I gotta figure out to go from here up to the front and do I still want to go with that shifter so that's gonna take some staring you know uh, contemplate on that one for a little bit and take my flashlight run around my horde and see what I got and, and get some ideas for a handle but uh, ideas and actually working sometime we'll mirror each other so let me uh, go shopping you ready Uh -huh. I'll be eating. It's all who you know. And I gotta go bring it in the house because I don't have a knife. Ho, ho, ho. Oh my. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Oh my. Oh boy, <laughs> that was good. Uh, that got me in the house going down the basement and going around with a little flashlight and looking for shifter stuff. And I came across this, I talked about it in the last video. And it's that thing I told you, it kind of goes out like, like a peacock and it's meant to go in front of a fireplace. Well, I don't want to hear all the haters. I put it out in front of a yard sale for like 20 bucks. Nobody would buy it. So it is going to turn into something else, I think. So. I was kind of eyeballing it in my brain what the size of it was and I was kind of thinking that parts would make a nice really nice looking kind of chain guard on there won't it? And I think so. I think the combination between the frame the frame and maybe some of that stuff will make a really cool looking guard over the middle of that. But that's a little bit later on right now. I'm going to continue on with um, linkage. I'm going to go do... Uh, I kind of was... I had a, a wood and brass pocket knife and the blade, I wanna say, probably was eight inches long. And I've had it for a long time. I just, I just don't carry it with me, I don't use it. Um, I think it's, I went looking through my hoard. I think it's in one of the toolboxes that are in like one of the VWs. And um, I wanted to use that. I was actually gonna use the blade because it has like a grip like set up to it and I figured I could use that for the shifter of it and between the wood and the brass I thought it would look nice and then going down to a metal blade and I was gonna just gonna drill right through the blade or plasma cut through the blade and make the pivot on that and uh, just whatever blade at length I needed to come down to here and make the rod going back but I haven't been able to find that the only thing I found was a, a broken one in our kitchen drawer kind of the same idea I guess but it's 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 wimpier you know, it just doesn't go with the, you know, it really doesn't kind of go with the theme. If you think I have a theme, I stab myself. I got this. This is too nice. How awesome would that look? <laughs> that would look great, but I just can't, I can't kill that, but it's got an awesome look. So, no. I said bash the crap out of that too. So, well, I'm gonna keep looking and uh, see what I can come up with. I gotta come up with something, so uh, we'll get there. All right, so this is kind of where I'm at right now. I dug, I cut out the uh, guts of that, um, I think it was the speed selector on that uh, snowblower. And it's, you push the button down, spring loaded, and it lets that pin grab a bunch of different notches for whatever kind of gear you wanna go and put it in. It's a little bulky um, from the side here, kind of looks ugly and, and whatnot. But I sat up on top and I looked at it and I kind of liked it. So I think I'm going to continue moving forward on it and, you know, we can try to pretty it up with something maybe later. But uh, I don't know, something like that. I'm not sure if I want to come off of there, off the bottom, and then off the top or vice versa. I'm not sure yet. But uh, what I figure I'd like to do is, again, I, I like the... Yeah, the simplicity of moving the shifter but I'm thinking uh, I want to see if I can egg out this doorknob and uh, see if we can replace that with that and it'll kind of give it a little bit more bling up on top 
So that's what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna see about uh, cutting the guts out of this and see what size and parts line up to what size and parts on that and see if it's even feasible. But uh, time for the hammer. Well, I made it from point A to point C. Uh, where are we? Oh, this is, uh, this was the other half of the rod that I grabbed. I, actually, I think it's the other half of this. I think it was this cut off. I don't even remember. Any. Anyway, it came with that section that I dragged in there. And what it had was a an end on it with a, you know, with a little tit with the uh, hole drilled in it for a cotta key and then the little nibs on it that hold the washer. Uh, and that, I think, was from that knuckle to begin with. I heated it up and put a bend in it. I thought I was going to have more of an, an issue with clearance over here. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, I probably could have just left that straight or I can still heat that up and bend that straight. And then back here, uh, this was... It was the tie rods from the go-kart front end I used on another project. I don't know where the other half is. Anyway, um, I'm, still, I'm still looking. The it, it's just a you know tie rod assembly for the for the front of a wheels on a go kart, and that was one of the rod ends from it. And uh, I ended up slicing them kind of both right here. I went and laid both rods up, let them pass each other, and kind of figured where all the linkages are going to go meet. Just hit them with a marker and then cut them both and then you know ground them both to like a pencil and then just welded them back together and cleaned them up. So what that kind of gives me now is um, if you push the button down it allows the pin to come down and then you know, the whole assembly rocks now. And we'll be able to be the clutch to put it in gear. I'm trying to be ginger because everything's just kind of really tacked together and uh, roughed in. I gotta make a little bit more clearance up here. This knob has to just get run down a little further and then the cap um, reattached. Just to give me a little bit more, you know, distance on that button, but that's uh, pretty good. Gotta grind this, we'll mark them, we'll clean that up, we'll start cleaning all the edges up. I didn't want to do that until I knew where I was going. And I think, think what I might do, uh, I'm looking, I'm trying to, still trying to make it somewhat pleasing to the eye is I think I'll probably take this bend back out of it so this end will drop back down probably put a bend in this side I probably should just flip it around and, you know whatever that's kicked up do the same on this side and then I might try to put a light curve on this a light bow to match the bottom of the tank maybe I don't know we'll put a, a slight bow in it just so it kind of looks like it goes with it instead of that straight line like that so I'm gonna go work on that and then uh, might be able to make stuff a little bit more permanent as long as I, I'm happy with all the the parts of it. I mean, it looks pretty good. And you gotta figure that's it's not gonna be any any doesn't need to go down any further than that because that's the belt almost being straight. So that's in the position all the way back. And right now I'm just clicking in that first one. More than likely it's gonna be this one or this one that it really goes into once I put more tension in the belt so it can kind of come up here. And I got quite a bit of adjustment. I have adjustment here and I have, I don't know, about an inch on this rod and about an inch and a half on this one. And again, worst case scenario, I could always slice them and move them around a little bit, but um, I think I'm in the window for uh, what we need. And then the cam, you know, the cam on the, uh, the pulley adjust too. All right, so I'm gonna go work on that and uh, get that heated up and bent up and uh, see if I feel like doing any more tonight, but I think uh, it's the little thing, you know, stuff like this, it just takes so much time. Look at the bench, you know, it just just turns into crap. You're just trying all different kinds of ideas and you go in your hoard and you come back with other stuff and you know, nah, that ain't gonna do it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what makes it fun too though. So uh, let me get that bent up and uh, turn you back on. And so winds down another day. So you gotta like to look from this side. This side, if you're gonna try to keep it as clean as possible. So you can see the swoop of the tank and the frame and everything. And now I'll just run all the yeah. Uh, try to run all the mechanicals on the other side so you don't really see them. You know, the try sneaking all the, the throttle and the fuel lines and that kind of stuff. So I did bend that rod up some to kind of match the profile of the tank. I like that. And it uh, seems like it tracks pretty good this way also. Kind of 
follows with with the uh, the line of the gas tank. I think that finding the door do the doorknob is what made it. You know that that I like that over that black one that would be on there. And again, I just turned that down on the lathe to uh, open it up to meet the threads. I didn't thread it. I just kind of like why. Well, there's no threads in it. I just kind of took the brass, got it real close with a caliper, and then just uh, threaded it onto that. It's on there pretty tight. In other words, I'm cutting. I guess I'm cutting my own. And all the brackets got to get cleaned up. You know, I'll notch all this stuff and clean it all up. And then the front bracket, I'm going to cover it with something. I'm, you know, I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm not too concerned with getting all the little pretties and covers and made up because stuff still kind of moves around a little bit like if I spent all the time on the other linkage you know and I ended up just ripping it off so why you know get too fancy on that and just uh, you know you figure maybe one or two notches more forward so it might be sitting right about there and uh, even when it shifts, the line kind of parallels the tank pretty good. But, you know, 90% of the time you're going to be seeing it like that when it's parked in neutral. And I got the adjustment I need and looking good. I'm gonna take it back apart and that got clips on the inside of it. You got to you gotta bend out from the bottom side. And again, this whole thing has to just get threaded down a little bit more. I want a little bit more. Yeah, that's how far the button moves. Right. That's how far the button's moving now. I'm gonna probably give that about another, about another quarter of an inch. These right here, for the standoffs, they're just real big, like um, railroad tie galvy nails. I just ground all the galvy off and cut them to the length I, I needed, and then I'll finish weld them to underneath. But yeah, we'll cover it with something. So you don't see it. Cut up a soup can or something. <laughs> That's for another time. I think uh, next we're probably going to go... You know, while I'm screwing with the gas tank, maybe I'll work with uh, my fill. Maybe, maybe not. That and uh, probably front brake is going to be the next set of mechanicals that need to go in place, you know. So let me take the bike and spin it around and put it on the other way. We'll start working on those levers. I probably should put some kind of little, like spring a little tensioner on this somewhere, on this one. Here, there. Yeah, maybe right here. But that doesn't need to be uh, on a lever. You know, we could just do that on a slide with a fixed, with a fixed deal, you know. I ripped it off. I had to put two more tacks on them. I, I yanked on the thing and I pulled it right apart. <laughs> I don't want to move the back tire right now just because uh, the front and back tire and frame, everything's in, in uh, alignment with each other. So if I push that forward a little bit, it will give me the play in the belt. But, I, you know, I, I know what it's going to do. I just don't want to uh, start knocking stuff out, out of whack from where I'm working from. Getting there. It's getting nice and mechanically now, you know, all the all the stuff that fills in the, the empty space is starting to come in now. And then I think uh, when I, I make the chain guard out of that cover and that, I think that'll look pretty cool. And it feels comfortable when I'm sitting on it. The, the lever's in a nice comfortable spot to grab. And I turn the handlebar should be fine. Shouldn't have any issues with that clearing it. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna go shut you all down again. Uh, thanks for watching and commenting, subscribing, and uh, see you again.